Hi, this is William from Global English TESOL Courses. And if you're watching this video, then you're probably at the point of your course where you're about to write a lesson plan um, in the area of phonetics. So I've got four quick tips to help you hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls that others have fallen into here. So let's uh, just run through them really briefly. OK, tip one. It's a lesson. It's an English lesson. It's not specifically about the whole world of phonetics. It is still an English lesson. So you're going to need to warm students up, get them engaged into the topic that you've chosen to base your lesson around. Um, you'll need to send them out on a high. So some kind of warm down activity that will uh, give them a real positive feeling as they leave. And then in your lesson itself, it needs a mix of activities, um, a mix of different skills. Uh, so it's not just all listening or all speaking. We need to blend in um, a, a balance of these things. So remember, it's still an English lesson, and that's my first tip. OK, tip number two. Well, keep it simple. Um, some people actually go online and they search for minimal pairs and they find a whole range of minimal pairs and they download them and they have them put them in a handout and they give everything to the students at elementary level. It's quite clear that that's going to be too much and it's going to overload students. So keep it really simple, especially if you're teaching at a lower level. Maybe just to choose a couple of minimal pairs um, if you're choosing that particular option to teach on. Um, get students practicing them, get them saying them, get them, um, you know, get their tongues around them. Model them for students. Maybe show a demonstration of them. So if you're choosing points of articulation as your particular area that you want to look at, actually model it. Show them where the tongue and the teeth all start at the beginning of that sound. Let them see it as well as practice it. Let them see it as well as hear it. So but keep it really simple. And I think that's the key point that we would make here, keeping it really simple. OK, number three. And it really is, again, all about simplicity, but at the same time, it's getting students to practice in different ways and do use different skills. So you might want to build in a listening activity where they hear the sounds being said. You might want to build in some time where they actually get to practice saying the sounds, but in a controlled way where you're listening and you're confirming that they've got the sound right, or maybe you're helping them shape the sound um, and, and get it in, in the right way that feels natural for them. And then, especially in the practice stage, you want to build an activity that gets them practicing those sounds in a realistic way and not just in isolation. So if you're doing uh, minimal pairs, get them to write a sentence or a brief text and then get them to say that sentence, hearing the sounds and have others hear them as well. Share that opportunity just to practice together. So that's the third tip. And the fourth tip is just have fun with it. Don't be overawed by the field of phonetics. A lot of teachers shy away from it, but we can have so much fun. And it's super relevant for your students as well, because it means that they will become more confident speakers of English because they will know how to shape their mouths around the sounds. So that's it. My four quick tips. I hope they're helpful. And we really look forward to seeing what we produce on this lesson plan. Good luck with it.